Good morning everybody and welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the like button and please share. It does help my channel a lot and I appreciate it so very much. Well, we're going to uh, uh, this is DeSantis vows no COVID-19 vaccine requirement for children. Now that's the headline. I'm not saying a word about vaccines. This is what I'm reading from a report. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis held a press conference on Thursday, vowing that Florida schools will never abide by guidance requiring children to be immunized with the COVID-19 vaccine. DeSantis delivered the remarks in response to news that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, added the COVID-19 vaccine to its recommended immunization schedule for adults and children. The press conference was originally set up to announce an executive order granting property tax relief to victims of Hurricane Ion, and DeSantis used the moment as an opportunity to address the issue of COVID-19 vaccine mandates for children. As long as I am kicking and screaming, there will be no COVID shot mandates for your kids, DeSantis said. That is your decision to make as a parent. And I agree. I can say that. I think. I don't know. I get a kick out of it when people kind of compare it to the measles, mumps, and rubella shots. And things that have been around for decades and decades, he continued. Parents, by and large, most parents in Florida have opted against doing these booster shots, particularly for young kids. DeSantis also alluded to a decision by Florida Surgeon General jo Joseph Latipo to recommend against the COVID-19 booster shot for adolescent and adult males. These are new shots, DeSantis explained, basically. Latipo's reason for that is there's not been a proven benefit for that. And there is a video that you all can go to this uh, news channel and watch. Before the CDC voted on the matter, DeSantis pre preempted their decision by tweeting to his constituents that Florida would never abide by COVID-19 vaccine requirement for children. Regardless of what at CDC government votes tomorrow, on whether COVID-19 vax are added to routine child immunizations, nothing changes in Florida. DeSantis wrote on Tuesday, Thanks to Governor Ron DeSantis, COVID mandates are not allowed in Florida, not pushed into schools, and I continue to recommend against them for healthy kids. On Wednesday, the CDC voted in favor of adding the COVID-19 vaccine to the child immunization schedule prompting DeSantis to issue a strong response on that matter. Missouri Governor Mike Parson delivered a similar message on Thursday to his voter based in response to the CDC's vote. As long as I am governor of Missouri, I will do everything under my authority to never let the federal government mandate COVID vaccines in our schools, wrote Parson. Okay, and that's all there is on that uh, article by DeSantis, and I like DeSantis. I think he's okay. And uh, I'm not sure he's gonna throw his hat in yet to run for president. Um, that would be really a tough up for me, you know. <laughs> I really do, I think he would do a great job as president. Yes, I sure do. Oh. Well, I don't have anything else lined up here, and I've only been on four minutes. Let's see. Um, another officer shot as attack on law enforcement continues. Let's see what this one brings up. Another officer shot as attack on law enforcement continues. Police officer in Hoover, Alabama, was shot multiple times in broad daylight Sunday just before noon by a suspect who allegedly fired at a vehicle on the interstate. It's not even safe to travel the interstates anymore. I worry about my kids. They were going to come for Thanksgiving this year. They were here last year for Thanksgiving, and they had planned on coming. But now with the economy the way it is, 
and they've all got jobs. They're all working. But she's, last night I talked to her because my granddaughter went in surgery this morning and had her gallbladder removed. But my daughter said, Mom, we can't afford it. You know, that's a mama and, and a daughter and four children. And she said the hotel prices, because they can't stay at my house, I have no room. Uh, I have one bedroom and my house is very tiny, very small. And I always tell them though, bring your sleeping bags. You know, the floor, you can sleep on the floor in your sleeping bags. But there would be uh, four, five, six, seven, seven people in my house. And they would just be suffocating. I just, you know. So they're going to wait until uh, in the spring, maybe around May. And she suggested last night, and she just had to mention my age. She says, well, Mom, it, you're going to be 80 years old in May. So why don't we kind of time this for around your birthday? And we'll make a big birthday party for you. And I'm going, well, you could forget the 80, but <laughs> the party sounds fun. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but anyway, so they're going to wait till spring now, or a little beyond spring. And um, so they just says, we can't afford it right now. We're barely making ends meet, you know, and they just bought a new home. And uh, her and my granddaughter and four children, and they just can't, they can't do it. So I said, that's fine. I was a little disappointed, of course. You know, it's been a year since I've seen them. And those kids are growing like weeds. You know, they're not babies anymore. In fact, Mason, the youngest of them, uh, he's in head first grade now. I can't believe it. I could see him as a little two-year-old when they came to visit me. He was about two years old. Yeah, it's just, oh well. But they'll be here around, if everything goes okay. And uh, I'll see him in May. So that's good. Uh, let's see now. Let's get back to this poor officer shot multiple times in broad daylight. Sunday, just before noon, by a suspect who allegedly fired at a vehicle on the interstate. It was just the latest in a string of violent incidents in which law enforcement officers have been attacked. Why are they taking it out on the police officers? They've got nothing to do with the shape we're in right now unless it pertains to a bad officer that, you know, killed that one poor guy by putting his knee on the guy's throat till he died. I mean, you know, there's good and bad, like I said in another video, good and bad and everything. But authorities were called after shots rang out at around 11.30 a.m. local time and a motorist reported several were fired into his vehicle. There were no injuries in that shooting. Police responded and were able to find the alleged shooter. Officers at that point followed him to an apartment complex. Well, thank God they got him. Shots were changed there between the suspect and pair of officers. One officer was struck twice, though there are conflicting reports that he was shot in both arms and one arm and his bulletproof vest. Residents said they heard roughly eight to nine bullets fired. The wounded officer was taken to a local hospital where he was treated and released. The suspect retreated to an apartment building where he was holed up for several hours. Hoover Police Lieutenant Daniel Lowe said police then tried to negotiate with the suspect who was wounded in one arm. And it shows the apartment looks like today or whatever, where it was there. But they reported that at 3.41 p.m. the suspect voluntarily excited the apartment exited the apartment and was taken into custody. He was then arrested, transported to a hospital for treatment for what was described as a non-life-threatening injury. This year has been one of the deadliest on record for U.S. police officers. God love them. Organizations that track violence directed at law enforcement report that at least 56 officers have been fatally shot so far in 2022. 
left their children behind, their wife behind, their family, their mother, their fathers, brothers, sisters, cousins. Uncalled for. It's so uncalled for. That number's 14% higher than at this point last year and a staggering 45% ahead of the pace set in 2020. The Alabama incident fortunately did not result in a fatality, but the U.S. is on track for its most since 67 officers were killed in 2016. Some cite a lack of community support for the surge in violence against police. What is clear is that criminals do not fear the consequences of attacking law enforcement. A situation must change. Yes, it must. So sad. My deepest condolences to the families and their children, their wife. That is so sad. God be with the rest of them. All right. Well, that's going to be it for now. So I'll be back. And uh, you are very, very blessed. You're a blessing to everyone around you. Keep that in mind. Later. <laughs>